Hello, my name's Joe and I'm here at Riverside Barbecue School and today we're making smoked chicken wings. Chicken wings are delicious, near enough in any form they come. Uh, but for me, there's one that stands out above the rest, and that is the buffalo wing, served, of course, with a blue cheese sauce and some celery on the side. So what we're going to do today, we've got these lovely free-range chicken wings. We're going to joint them up. Uh, we'll toss them in a rub and a little bit of baking powder, get them on the master touch over here, smoke them for a little while, then ramp up the heat, crisp them up. We'll toss them in a sauce and we'll serve them up ready to eat later on. The chicken wings uh, usually come with three joints. So you've got the drum here, or the drumette, which attaches to the breast at this end. The flat, which has got the two bones, I suppose it's the equivalent of a person's forearm. And then the tip, which comes off. These actually came without the tips. Um, if yours come with them, don't get rid of the tips. They're really useful for making stocks, adding flavors to gravies and things like that. Buying wings whole and jointing them yourself is a really useful way of building up confidence with a knife, building up your knife skills, progressing towards doing maybe a bit more of your own butchery at home. Um, I'm using a six inch boning knife. It's pretty rigid, but got a bit of flex in it. Any knife will do. Um, if you have a, a nice sharp carving knife or whatever, don't use that because you're gonna be coming into contact with bone and that's probably gonna have a fairly delicate edge. So choose a knife that you don't mind coming into contact with the firm bone. So I'm just gonna join a few of these up. There's a bit of a knack to it. I like to hold the flat and just come down in between them and you sort of go down and round and you just come between the joints there. So we'll do the same thing again. Just cut down, come round. And usually, if it's been a while since I've done it, the first few will be a bit rough, but then you sort of get to know about where the joint is. You can start to feel it. And you should be able to get through a kilo of wings in less than a minute, probably. But even there, you see I kind of hit the wrong part, but just come at it again. Doesn't matter, don't rush. Uh, and if you're really not confident doing this, just ask your butcher to do it for you. Or if you're buying online, look for pre-jointed wings. Right, these wings are now jointed up into single joints. There are so many ways of preparing chicken wings. Uh, one, one thing that many people do is to add a coating that becomes the crisp exterior. But what I'm gonna do with this cook is just rely on the skin of the chicken itself to be the thing that gets crispy. In order to do that, we need dry skin. Uh, you can, if you've got time and space, dry them out in the fridge overnight. So just joint them up, put them in a single layer, uncovered in the fridge, and it'll help dry the skin out. What I'm gonna do is add some baking powder. Um, not too much, because you don't want clumps at the end when you eat it, but it'll just help to bring the moisture out uh, and absorb it. And the other thing that will happen is as we cook them slowly on the barbecue, the fat will render out and that'll go to the skin and that will just help crisp up when we ramp the heat up at the end. Seasoning wise, I'm gonna use some Slap Your Mama. It's one of our favorite rubs here, particularly on chicken. Now it is quite salty, so I will apply kind of cautiously. Don't go too heavy with it. You can always add more seasoning at the end if you feel you need it. But between the rub and the sauce, it's gonna taste great. Let's go. Well, the wings are coated. I'm getting hungry. Let's light the grill and we'll cook them. Just a quick word on the cooking setup. I've got the Master Touch 57 centimeter premium E5775 here. You'll see I've got between 10 and 12 lit briquettes in there and a chunk of cherry on top. Crucially, the fuel is directly opposite the top vent, and that just means that with the airflow that draws through, you should get a really consistent ambient temperature uh, throughout the entire cooking area. I have shut down the bottom vent um, so it's not letting as much air in, just to keep the temperature a little bit lower, but I will say with the thermometer directly above the fuel, you'll get a slightly false reading. But I know with that number of briquettes and the vents where they are, I'll be cooking at about where I want to be. So you can see I've decanted out this lit lump wood. Um, I do have both fuel baskets in there, but I've really heavily weighted it in favor of the back basket just because of the volume of wings. If you had too much charcoal in the front basket, these would end up being burnt, uh, being done too quickly. You can see they're kind of burnished with the, uh, the color of the smoke and you can see they're beginning to get crispy in places. Um, and so if we just leave the lid down for a bit, I've opened up all of the vents. This is gonna get screaming hot and they should crisp up, be lovely and soft on the inside, crispy on the outside. We'll toss them in some sauce and we'll be ready to go. Right, I'm calling these done. I've taken the temperature of most of them um, just to get an idea because obviously the ones positioned closer to the fire you might think uh, are done a little bit sooner. They're all even in color um, and I am going to just quickly heat up this sauce in a silver pan. 
and then toss them and we will serve up. So I've just got this silver bowl here. I've taken the wings off and the heated sauce. You can see how steamy that all is. It's not crucial that you heat the sauce, but I think the way that if it's cold, it draws the, the heat out of the wings and it might contribute to slightly soggy skin. So I always just heat it because it's easy to do so. So what I'm gonna do is just give these a toss. And uh, if you're not confident tossing, then you just give them a stir. Just make sure they're all covered. You can see them like that. I'm going to get them on the board next to the sauce and the celery, and we'll try one shortly. Well, as I said earlier on, I'm pretty hungry, so I think it's time to tuck in. I have a particular method for eating these. Uh, flats are my favourite. Sorry if you prefer drumettes, but... So what I do is, you kind of give them a little twist, and you can hear you like pull off the gristly bit at the end, and then one of those bones should just twist out. You can obviously eat the scraps. And then that whole bit, you can just pull off the bone. So give it a dip, and in you go. Obviously, make sure you've got some sort of napkin blue roll to hand because it's going to get messy, particularly if you're a bearded gentleman like myself. The thing I love about buffalo wings, and you have to do the, the blue cheese sauce with them, they're kind of spicy, rich, tangy, and then the blue cheese just really pulls it back because it's quite cooling, even though it's kind of hyper savory and also tangy in its own way. You'll see from the recipe that there's some quite tangy ingredients in there, but it's just an absolute flavor explosion. And then these celery sticks on the side, they're not just for decoration. Give them a dunk in the blue cheese sauce as well, and that will just cool your mouth down. One thing you can do if you like it extra hot is just add some cayenne pepper powder to the Frank's Red Hot. Um, I personally think it's completely fine as it is and there shouldn't be anybody who finds it too hot unless they're very sensitive to spice. Anyway, hope you make these, hope you enjoy. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. See you next time.